Welcome back to the final episode of Master the Art of Music Creation Remix here at avidblogs.com. In the previous episodes, I demonstrated how to use Pro Tools for music creation by remixing the track Words to Say by the band The Arrows. Today, I will finish the track with some final mixing and mastering techniques. For that, I'm going to use a wide range of AX plugins and some of the Pro Tools automation features. I will also show and explain how to integrate output gear into the virtual mixer of Pro Tools. Because I started mixing the remix during the process of creation, the track already sounds pretty good. Now it's all about the final adjustments to make the mix really stand out, ready for the world to listen. I recommend you take a break for a couple of days, maybe work on another project to let you get a fresh perspective on the track. And then return to the project to review things like tuning, rhythmic and general tempo before finalizing the track. When I listen to the remix now, I find it a bit too slow. I think it could just be a little bit faster. With Pro Tools, it's an easy task to change the global tempo of a song, even at such a late stage of production. I will use the Elastic Time feature in Pro Tools once more, and here's how you do it. To start with, I need to set all the audio tracks to Elastic Time by choosing an appropriate algorithm for each track. For example, it could be rhythmic on a drum track and polyphonic on all other tracks. The tracks also need to be set to tick bass. If you open the Task Manager window, you'll see the clips being prepared for elastic time editing. This process only needs to be done once. After that, you can do a tempo change in real time and I'll do that now. So let's speed up the song slightly from 123 to 125 BPM. Wow, that's so much better. Maybe even a bit more, like 128? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's a bit too much now. Let's return to 125 BPM and leave it there. And as you can see, I can literally change the tempo like you can on a tape machine in real time and without affecting the pitch. If you like to use the Elastic Engine in order to create tape machine or vinyl kind of effects, where the tempo change also affects the pitch of the audio material, just choose Vary Speed as the algorithm. Pro Tools offers a comprehensive automation which can be used in different ways for mixing. I like to show you one of my favorite automation features in Pro Tools, which is called Ledge Prime and Stop. It's a preference you set up and here's how you can use it. I use Latch Prime and Stop for bypassing a plugin or muting tracks for a certain time. It's much faster doing it that way than drawing a line on each track. Having Latch Prime and Stop enabled means that changes you do while being in stop mode will be buffered and can then be written to the automation. At the beginning of the song, there's this little riser, which is a good example of how to use Latch Prime and Stop. Here at the very end of the riser, I'd like to make the synth more standalone and mute all of the effects returns. Let me demonstrate how easy this is with Latch Prime and Stop. If you open the automation window with Command plus 4, you can see various functions which all refer to automation commands. Using this button right here, for example, will write automation to a selected area. 
So I set all of my effects tracks to auto latch by selecting the tracks and holding Option plus Shift while choosing latch mode. Option plus Shift means do to select it and whatever is selected. The shortcut also works in the mix window. Now, while still holding Option plus Shift, I will mute the effects returns. As you can see, latch turns into red, indicating that changes have been made to the existing automation data. All I do now is hit the right button here, and all these changes are written to the selected area on those tracks. Latch changed back to white, indicating there's no changed automation data in the buffer anymore. You can see how all the mute buttons will turn on just in this area. Using this feature will speed up your workflow when muting or unmuting sends. For example, in order to feed an additional reverb for the vocals. Maybe just for the chorus or another delay. Just don't forget to set the preference and hit the right automation button. Let me show you another way you can clean up your mix by using the Pro Expander from Avid in order to lower the level of a delay. In the previous episode, I showed you all of the AX plugins used on the main synth. Let's now have a look on the sand effects being used for the synth. Beside Revibe and Altiverb for long and a short reverb, there's a delay coming from one of the Pro Tools built-in plugins, Modulation Delay 3. But I just want to hear the delay in the small gaps between the actual notes. Also, due to the harmonic changes, it might muddy my mix if it's constantly audible at the same level. I use an internal bus, which I will rename SC Synth for Sidechain. You can rename Sand, Ins and Outs just by right-clicking with the mouse. I now assign this bus as my Sidechain key input of the Pro Expander plugin. Now every time the synth is playing, it will duck the delay by the amount I can set up within the Pro Expander plugin. Let's have a look at the processing and plugin being used on the master bus. There are many powerful AX plugins you can use for mastering your track. Avid just recently released two fantastic plugins that are perfect for mastering. The Pro Multiband Dynamics and the Pro Subharmonic that I like to use for adding very low end. Pro Subharmonic offers a unique feature that allows you to trigger the frequencies that generate the sub from a MIDI track. Let me show you how this works. So here's a MIDI track that is just playing the bass notes of the song. But it's not feeding any instrument, it's feeding the Pro Subharmonic plugin. See how the frequencies move according to the harmonics in the song. That's a fantastic way to tune your kick to the key of the song, for example. And if you like to have the sub sound even deeper, just transpose the MIDI clip down by an octave. One of the best EQ plugins not only for mastering is probably the new Pro Q2 from FabFilter with just too many features to cover in a single episode. But look at the FFT and how I can easily take out these frequencies in order to clean up the mix. The full screen mode is just amazing. Let's finish this episode with another Pro Tools feature, which is IO Plugin. With this plugin, I can integrate analog output gear into my Pro Tools mixer very easily and bypass it without even leaving the hotspot. And here's how you set it up. 
In the I.O. setup, make sure you have an empty input and output available at your attached audio interface. It is important that in and out do have the same number. Under the insert tab right here, you can set up the hardware insert and give it the name of your hardware device. As this I.O. is connected to the Chandler Curve Bender, I will just name it EMI. Now, in the Pro Tools Mixer, this appears as a plugin, which basically sends the audio from the track out and through the EMI and brings it back to the next plugin, which in my case is the Pro Limiter from Avid. It's just another great AX plugin, which helps to get your mix as loud as professional productions. In order to review signal with or without the channel processing, I can click on the plugin while holding down Ctrl plus Command, which will deactivate the hardware insert. It's just like bypassing a plugin. That's really handy, especially when your gear sits somewhere out of the reach of the sweet spot. I hope you found a lot of inspiration to create your own version of the song and create great mixes with Pro Tools and AX plugins. Remember, the link to the Arrows original session download can be found on avid.com slash creation to mix. Good luck with your productions and thanks for watching the Master the Arts series.